My name is Siddharth Mahapatra. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Pediatrics, and I have a courtesy appointment in the Department of Biochemistry as well, where I've got my lab. I'm also the director of research for the Division of Critical Care, and I stepped into that role a couple of years ago. You know, we take care of pediatric patients with brain tumors routinely in our intensive care unit. They arrive there usually after their brain tumor has been resected um, and to address the number of um, complications that take place from a child that has a brain tumor. So we end up spending quite a bit of time with them and their families, and we can get pretty close to them. Within brain tumors, medulloblastoma is the most malignant. It may not be a very high incidence. There's only about 500 cases per year, but it is the tumor that claims um, the most lives in uh, pediatric patients. But even within medulloblastoma, there's a grade of different tumors that a child can get. There are ones that are very well tolerated and those that the child has a beautiful cure rate from, and that's not the ones I'm interested in. What I'm interested in are the high-risk groups. I also learned that in the field of medulloblastoma, we know very little about the high-risk tumors. We know quite a bit about the ones where the children are doing well, but in these high-risk tumors, we haven't done enough. So within the high-risk groups, what is interesting is that these tumors share a very specific type of mutation. And that mutation affects one of the chromosomes, chromosome 17. And within that chromosome, I learned there are tremendous numbers of tumor suppressor genes. Now, if you knock out a section of a chromosome that has multiple tumor suppressor genes, the result potentially could be a tumor forming. So why not study the actual mechanism, biology, and pathophysiology of how those mutations lead to medulloblastoma? Because when you study that, when you get a good understanding of the mechanisms that lead to these tumors, you can design therapies to potentially reverse or prevent those from ever taking place or address the loss of those tumor suppressor genes. There's a big gap. Like, people are studying these other two tumors there, putting all of their efforts into it, but these, we're kind of shying away from it because we don't get it. We don't really understand those, so you know what, we'll, we'll see. We'll talk about these two and then we'll work on those later. I'm like, uh, you know what, no, let's work on these now. Thank you.